How's it going guys? So we have a huge update coming for Russ this next week. So uh, literally a week from now is going to be the big force wipe and boy there are a ton of changes. Not only is the team killing it with doing background stuff like HDRP and all that, they're working on a ton of other things that look absolutely amazing. What reason we are in the main <laughs> menu reason we're in the main menu is that there's been a few changes to options so you've now got your field of um, oh no, no where is it it is now screen is the new settings and you can actually change your screen resolution uh, whether you're on full screen or not and then there's an apply changes button so that is actually a nice little addition to the main menu here all right so let's get down to the nitty-gritty guys we've got a few changes now if you can tell down in the left corner the ui has changed a little bit on the way it looks i, I actually like it. it looks a little more clean and uh i don't know it just kind of matches everything else uh some upcoming changes i can't show you yet but uh once you create a team and you are the team leader they are working on the possibility of being able to leave waypoints on the map that your team will be able to see now i don't know if that 100% means drawing, there's some things that indicated towards maybe marking things more than a waypoint. I don't know. We'll just have to see. It's in its very early stages of being worked together. So uh, we're just going to have to see on that one there. But it is definitely a cool little thing. In addition, let's go ahead and just kind of cover like some of the boring stuff or things you can't really show. Um, map improvements, they've actually gone ahead and a lot of people were sad about large mon monuments being removed from small maps. They are now back and there's also a convert for server owners to choose which ones they want to spawn, which I thought is a really cool thing. As well as with that, have made it to where if your map is at least 3,500, it will have the excavator and launch site. If it's below, however, it will not. So that's kind of the thing to think up there. Uh, they've done some new icons, some changes to the vitals display, like I mentioned to you. Uh, there was a few things that broke, blah, blah, blah. Oh, the cargo ship had an exploit where you could shoot through walls. That should be fixed on staging now. The hot air balloon collider. So when those things are deflated, they still had a collision of a inflated balloon. So people would fly over one not knowing and kaboom, they just blow up. And that was really crappy. That has been fixed now. So uh, yeah, as long as you're not gliding across the floor, literally into it, you should be good. They also increased the no build zone around the inflated balloon itself. So not the deflated, but actual inflated balloon. They've also done a ton of optimizations to the debug camera. So that is something that is really cool for uh, content creators when they are going ahead to work on that kind of stuff. One other thing I wanted to go ahead and show you guys was the uh, emulation update or so. These are some really old screenshots. I couldn't find mine. So Shadow was, uh, Shadow as in Shadow Frax, was nice enough to send me a picture from that he used in his videos from his archive. So yeah. I forgot to mention this last week, they are finally working on this again after it's been asleep for years. And basically what this is, is when you set something on fire, it sets on fire. Uh, right now it just kind of burns a little bit and fizzles out. So I don't know when this is coming. It doesn't seem like a priority because I only see work on it every once in a while. My best guess is it might roll out with the HDRP because that's when they're kind of doing a big overhaul to everything in the game visually. And that would just kind of make sense of a good time to implement a upgraded system. So that's kind of a thing right there. That covers it for kind of those things. So let's go ahead and take a look-see at what we've got going on with everything else. So uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the scrap heli. So this sucker is pretty much done. There's been a few changes to it. Uh, if you <laughs> park this thing on somebody, it's going to crush them and they will die. So do not try to touch the underside of this thing. It will uh, destroy you. Now, a lot of people are asking, will there be more fuel in it? And uh, things can always change in the future. But as of right now, Hulk said, no, it will only hold 500 fuel. No, both fuel tanks won't hold 500 each. And he has no intention of making it to where the driver can add more fuel. He says that the balance to this is you're going to have to land and refuel this puppy. 
Now, I know if you're very careful while you're flying, you can kind of do this, okay? So if you have a passenger in the back with some low grade, if they're very daring and don't mind risking flying off the back of it, they could creep around here and do that well in midair. But again, that's gonna be quite the acrobatic act. So let's go ahead and check out one other thing here. Uh, this guy now has a thousand health, is gonna be its final health it looks like, and it takes um, metal frags to repair it, and when it crashes and blows up, you can actually harvest it from metal frags. So let's go ahead and bring this guy into the sky because I wanted to show you that the gauges work. So as you look, our speed and heading are moving. You can see the fuel gauge shows full. And yeah, it's just one of those really kind of awesome things. There's also a couple of post-it notes that have been added to the console I thought was really funny. And yeah, I, I just absolutely love this heli. I can't wait for it to get in. Uh, no word of where we will get it and such so far. We'll just have to see um, how that works. But, oh. Quit taking off on your own there. But uh, yeah, definitely a very cool one. I'm excited to see that. And uh, yeah, it's just, this thing's coming together and uh, it's gonna be incredible to check out. Now, there are a few concerns with this big thing coming in. Like, how do we deal with this? A lot of people have asked for like stinger missiles or something else that can like knock these out of the sky. Well, the HV rockets have been updated and Check how fast they are. <laughs> it, it, I shot it through the windows! I can't believe it. Okay, there we go. We hit it. They do extra damage to aircraft. This guy, as you can see, actually catches on fire like the actual heli, which is cool. And it takes three HVs to kill this guy you can see he's on fire even more and look there's it starts to spark in front which i think is amazing oops i shot straight through the window again the hvs are so much faster now the hvs have been changed a little bit which we'll cover in a minute there you go you see it it falls apart flames kind of go everywhere and then once the flames go out you can start harvesting the gibbs that stay around so that's a cool thing right there a mini copter takes two hvs to kill it well, it takes like one and a half, but you know, the, there's no such thing as a half rocket. So, <laughs> yeah, I get the idea. The SAM site, it also does increased damage now to the uh, aircraft that's been done. All right, it's uh, six for the mini copter and eight SAM site for the uh, big guy over there. So yeah, there you go. That's a very nice thing right there. Now, Auto turrets have had a big change, which we'll cover, but uh, there's a couple other things. I kind of did a separate video on it, but there are a few more things that have uh, changed about it, so we will cover it there. Now, with the auto turrets and HV rockets, they are also weak to the HV rockets. So if we go to uh, HV, we check out the rocket, you'll see the recipe for it has changed. It now no longer requires explosives. And if we look at the rocket launcher itself, it is now a tier two instead of three, and it's 40 instead of 60, and uh, it takes uh, two less pipes to craft. So that is actually uh, an interesting change. We're gonna have to see how it is. But in conjunction with that, the high velocity rocket only does like 18 damage to anything from stone up, and it does maybe like I think it's like 60 or 80 damage to wood, so uh, they are useless with any kind of rating. They do do increased damage to personnel now. Um, I believe, let's see, does this guy actually say uh, lethality, 480. Yeah, so I mean, <laughs> bye bye <laughs> if you get nailed with one of these. Uh, so it's, the HV rocket now has a purpose. It is a turret killer, an anti-aircraft, and anti-personnel rocket. So that is a very cool thing there. It's super cheap. So you actually wouldn't mind using it for that. Uh, but some might argue it is too cheap now. We'll just have to see. So what does it do to an auto turret? Well, let's pull one out and show you. So we got Mr. Turret here with 1,000 HP. We hit it with one. Boom. That does about half its damage. And... Two... 
And... Boom! So three HV rockets to take out Mr. Auto Turret. Now, the frag grenade has also been buffed. It now does uh, quite a bit more damage. It does 225 to humans and animals. So, yeah, one of these guys gets right underneath your butt, you're gonna die like a real grenade would do. <laughs> it definitely makes a lot more sense. So, let's go ahead and show... Uh, oh, we need a little bit more stone. We'll do that. Uh, did I hit 100 instead of 1,000? Wow. Okay, there we go. Do that. Let's get another auto turret down and show... Whoops. Oh, it doesn't matter if I'm authorized. So, they do increase damage to the auto turret now. You'll see that one does quite a bit of damage, uh, just a little bit over 100. So, it actually takes 10 of these, if you do the math, to go ahead and take out an auto turret now. I don't know why I'm throwing them like that. Four. Three. Two. One. And... Boom! There it goes! So, there you have it. Those are some uh, cool changes right there. I'm definitely excited to see how people use it. It's, it's gonna be something different. Uh, <laughs> and these changes are definitely pretty good. It's a lot better than... Uh, it was originally three frag grenades and one HV rocket for a turret. Uh, that just seemed a little too OP, and I think the new adjustments are actually quite nice. I think 10 and 3 is a really good number. Also, I wanted to show you there's quite a few gibs right here, so definitely uh, worth grabbing the frags on it if you're short. So, hey, or at least to, you know, repair your next one. Uh, so other changes we got here, this is actually the large battery. Its model has been updated to a custom one made by Tom, and I think it looks absolutely amazing. Nothing else has changed with it, just the physical look of the battery itself. Over here, pressure plates have seen a little change. Now, when they are stepped on, they release a small electrical signal, which obviously will be something for traps, but here's the main thing that helps with it. You can now hide them under a rug. So you could be raiding a base, and then you hear click, click, and it's all over. <laughs> so definitely a very cool thing. This is something we have needed. We need more traps, and this is totally perfect as a start. Another thing we have gotten... Whenever you're doing outside turrets, or maybe you're outside uh, cupboards to protect your compound, you're putting cupboards up for your wall, whatever, it's kind of annoying when you place it down and you have to authorize. Well, as you can see, I didn't click E. It automatically authorizes on its own. So whoever places a TC now gets automatically authorized. It's not a big thing, but it's a nice little change that I am very happy to welcome. Another thing is the horse trough can now be placed on foundations, which I thought is great. I love that. It's awesome. And this means we can probably store our horses inside somewhere safe now where people can't steal them. We can make them a little barn. They're also doing work into getting the horses to fit better uh, through, I believe, like the wall frames. So, uh, yeah, I think right now you get clipped off if that happens. So, let's see. Uh, spawn ride able horse. There we go. So additionally, with the changes, the horse has actually had a reduction in HP. Um, let's see if we can... We gotta hurt him a bit. I don't know if this will kill him. Okay, didn't kill him. Good, good, good. Uh, there you go. So reduction down to 400 HP. And uh, one of the other big changes is they're a little bit better on the kind of weird terrain. And with their steering, uh, also getting stuck on things, or like if it used to be if you bump up against a tree, it would just kind of rake you off of it, and it doesn't do that anymore. There's still lots of movement adjustments that need to be done with the horses, and things like jumping and so forth added. But one of the cool things, <laughs> look at him go. One of the cool things too is I saw some options um, or commits of that they're working on making leads. For the horse, so yeah, that's going to be part of, I guess, being able to call, you know, since you can't ride them into garage door because you can't fit, you can obviously lead them in. So that's a very cool thing right there. I don't know if they'll have a follow command or if it's just you put a rope on them and drag them. We'll just have to see how that goes, but that isn't something that's on staging yet, so we can't go ahead and check that out. 
but what we can check out is the new little generator so guys we've got a small generator that has been added it is the portable generator and this little guy uh well it, it, it's a nice little thing i think its main purpose is going to be a backup for if your batteries get destroyed but let's cover its stats first uh, it costs 25 high qual to make it's 75 scrap to research it generates 35 power it takes 30 seconds to craft it is a tier one and it uses eight low grade fuel per minute so there's how that works right there now clicking on it just turns it on so you're gonna have to hold e to open it you can drag fuel in there and it can take four whole stacks so it can take 2000 fuel now which is definitely a nice one uh previously it only had one stack and didn't seem like it would last too long so you can actually do some decent work with this so let's go ahead and take a look at its connectors over here it has a force stop a first a force start and then of course power out so what these can be used for is you can set up electrical system for backup so you can say uh you know you can set up to where if power no longer is noticed from here or detected generator turns on and then over here once power is connect or uh detected again generator turns off so that's actually a really nice thing. This is also, if solar panels uh, are the only thing you use, you'll know that at nighttime, unless you have a good battery bank, you don't really have um, enough power to get through the night. So this could be a little thing that helps with that as well. So we're gonna go ahead and connect this guy over to Mr. Auto Turret. And uh, we've got a few changes on the Auto Turret as well. One thing you will notice is, I'm going to deauthorize here. Uh, you can no longer authorize or interact with a turret in any way while it's off unless you have building privilege This is the fact uh, This is done because when a turret doesn't have power as you can see it is always off You can't just turn it on and let it be safe. So this is the way to keep it safe uh, You don't need to have the Authorization for it to not shoot you you still have to authorize on the turret itself as you'll see, I have to authorize here before I can do anything. Then you can start to interact with it. You can put in Peacekeeper, you can fill her up, etc., etc. As you'll see, the turret has the six places for ammo, and uh, they're supposed to be uh, undrainable now. Uh, in testing, I I'm not entirely sure. We'll just have to wait until the dev blog uh, pops out next week to kind of see where that goes. But in addition to this, it also has connections for some sensors here. Now, I did a whole video showing it, but we'll just quickly kind of just strap something to it just so you can see here in case you missed that video. Uh, let's grab, let's see, a couple different lights here. This one, that one, and uh, we'll do two of those. So we'll put indicator, indicator, and alarm. So the alarm light, we're going to have a couple different connections here. You've got no ammo, low ammo, and has a target. So we're gonna say this guy says target. We're gonna go to low ammo is gonna be this first guy, and then no ammo is gonna be the second guy right here. So you can see they're all hooked up now. So let's go ahead and power on our generator. And you can see the low and no ammo are flashing right away and that's because our friend here doesn't have any ammo so to go ahead and access it you do have to turn it off uh, let's go grab some ammunition we'll go ahead and put a stack in there and we'll go ahead and power it back on and then let's spawn in a NPC spawn NPC oh what is it player test player test so let's go ahead and do a couple of them. You'll see once it has someone targeted, the siren light goes off. There you go. So that guy flashes whenever it notices someone is in front. So you can use this to know when someone's trying to drain your turret, basically. And okay, I think we maybe gave it a little too much ammo for the test here. So let's turn it back on. Uh, you'll see, so once it dips below about 40, it starts to flash, I believe. 
So there you have it. That's how uh, the basic changes to the new turret works. Hopefully we get those options with the SAM site as well. That would be uh, an awesome thing. Now I did talk to Helk. A lot of people use arrows from a distance to kill uh, the, the auto turrets. And uh, I talked to Helk and he said he's considering either uh, nullifying or re greatly reducing the amount of damage that arrows do to auto turrets. But he did mention something to me, which is the first time I've ever heard this. Uh, as gameplay is intended by him and the developers, auto turrets were meant to be inside only. We've been using them for years on the outside because, well, we want to protect the outside of a base. We want to protect our horses. We want to protect our compounds. We want to protect our walls. We want to have a turret to protect us as we come into our gate. And most importantly, the SAM sites can't protect themselves from melee. Uh, so, you know, if someone can jump over your wall and run over to it, they can just hatchet it to death or even quicker hit a jackhammer to it. So, yeah, that's kind of an interesting thing. I don't know if we'll be getting more traps, but it does seem like they're starting to work on it because we got this little change here. Now, another thing that has been merged uh, or being worked on by Helk was something called the te uh, Tesla coil. Now, I don't know if that is going to be a trap or if it's going to be wireless power. One time I talked to him about before electricity was even out, I said, uh, what's the plans? Are you going to do wires? What are you going to do? And he said, ah, you know, maybe a combination, but wires are messy. We might look into a way to do wireless power. So maybe that's what it is. I'm kind of hoping it's a trap or hey, maybe you'll do both. You get too close to it and it zaps you and it also does wireless power. That would be actually a win-win situation right there if you ask me. So, hey, you know, that's uh, something to look forward to in the future. We'll just have to see. But uh, that's the majority of it. The team is still working on the HDRP actively. Gary, Gary and a few of them are just knocking that out like crazy. Bill is tearing up cars, working super hard. Uh, he told me he might have had something to share this week, but it looks like they're not quite ready for it. So it might be another couple weeks before he can share something. He said there's no reason to just get pictures because this picture I'm showing you is still what the cars look like. Uh, so it, he wants to, you know, get me something where they're moving in process. And uh, he's been working really hard to get everything to function. I mean, it's a big deal. Not only does it have to have, like, the parented movement, you know, where someone can stand in the back. You've got to have the mounting done right, steering angles. I mean, you've played with a test car that you can spawn in, the sedan. That thing can't really get up a hill even. So... You know, there's a lot of work to be done, and he's just kind of tearing that up. So that's awesome there. They've also got a bunch of dudes working on the instruments, um, and uh, I, I can't wait to see that. I know uh, Jared is working on them and said he might have, yeah, he might have some stuff in the next coming week or so. So uh, hopefully I can show you something with the instruments, or at least at the very least what they look like. But they're making a full complicated system of where you can actually play them. So that is something very, very cool. Uh, I know some people don't really care about it, but hey, every little bit that can add to the game and just give someone something to like, I honestly don't mind to see that happen. But I believe that is pretty much all of the big stuff, guys. Again, there's going to be a ton and ton, a ton of balance changes and everything. None of this is permanent, so to say. But uh, there is one last thing. If you haven't noticed, Rust now has a merchandise store. Uh, I've had word that they may be doing some sponsorships uh, with certain YouTubers to test it, and they might be doing promo codes and that kind of stuff, so you'll just have to see. Uh, the prices are a bit high on some of the items, but I wouldn't say too much higher than, like, let's say you go get a t-shirt from a concert or something, but the quality is why it's so high. Uh, Alistair and team have also said that it's just really high-quality stuff. They didn't want to give anything that's kind of crappy. They wanted to make sure that it would be something that's worth it. So hopefully, uh, you know, you can take that into consideration. I do feel maybe the mug is a little bit overpriced and maybe the hoodie, uh, that's just kind of a painful painful price there. We'll have to see. And they said, of course, they'll be listening to feedback and um, possibly make adjustments or change. A lot of people have put out some cool ideas for other products for them to carry, which uh, I can't wait to see what else they add. The posters and some of the other stuff are totally awesome. You should go check it out. I'll put a link down in the description below below the uh, current dev blog link so that's gonna do it guys thanks for watching we will see you next week for the full update and uh whatever skins thanks for watching you guys have a great weekend